All right, we're previewing the Sunday and Monday night football games here on the Irish NFL show. For podcast listeners, this is part four of four. We chucked the week's games up into four quarters, and you can find the other three on your podcast platform of choice where we preview the two uh, early Sunday games uh, and the first part of the Sunday evening games. Uh, We start this segment with the Cowboys at the Cardinals. Um, Brian, the Cardinals have been perhaps a little bit better than advertised uh, first two games of the season. Obviously, they laid down and died and allowed your Giants to storm back to a record equaling comeback from their perspective. Um, But the Cowboys, surely for the Cardinals, um, they're going to find themselves massively overmatched at home on Sunday. Very unfair comment there regarding them laying down and dying. It took all of um, three and a half quarters and, and a little bit towards the end for the Giants to Finally, get our line. Like, like, we can't help you be impressed with the Cardinals. Like, genuinely, like, like no one gave him a chance. They really thought they would be stuffed in both games. It, two, two NFC East. Teams. I mean, what a what a unique schedule. You start the season with three NFC East games in a row. Um, yeah, this is a different beast, though. Like this Cowboys team. I, don't, I know we didn't pick them to win the Super Bowl this year, but the way that we start playing, it's a big blow. In, in the newest this evening that Trayvon Diggs has torn his ACL. It'd be interesting to see how they accommodate. You know. You know, because Stephen Gilmore was playing so well. There was uh, a number of rookies that were up and down last year. It'd be interesting to see who plays alongside him over the, on the other side. And if there's any way that they can expose that on Sunday, because the Cardinals' offense last weekend, for all the French teams had, they played quite well for, for two and a half quarters. They played quite well the previous week, whilst not putting up huge numbers. I'd like to see the Cardinals play well, because I think they are playing for this coach and for Gannon, who's had a lot of, you know, not a stick at the end of his tenure with the Eagles and even, even during his time since he took over. I think this is a step too far. I think just, this is the week where we see the gap appear big time and I think the Cowboys will feast on this Cardinals team on Sunday. Cowboys, annihilation job. Colm, we've talked a lot about uh, the Cowboys over the first two games and how they've come flying out of the traps. And yet most of what we've been talking about is what they've been doing defensively. Um, and obviously losing Trayvon Diggs is a blow, but Micah Parsons has been a man apart this year. We, we've mentioned him time and time again. Not a huge amount of offensive highlights to call to mind, though. Um, Brian saying they're going to blow the cards out, and, and, and well, they might. But will it be that suffocating defense that, that holds the cards down and... and, and or, or, or will Dak actually get it going? Because it, it's it's not been an offensive explosion for all the points that they put up, funnily enough. They haven't needed it. Uh, for, for me, um, before that awful Diggs news, I, I had gone actually with uh, Journeys Don't Stop Believing, uh, probably even more applicable at this point because Jerry Jones always uh, believes in winning the, the Super Bowl. And for the cards, it's about uh, believing that you might end up with Caleb Williams. Um, if the Bears don't get him first, the, the look, the, this, if, I mean, Fred is, um, you know, has said it, it's next man up and it will be, but I mean, Diggs is, he, you know, he's, he's really good. Like, it, it's funny. He had that year a couple of years ago with all the interceptions and, and people were saying, oh yeah, but if he didn't have the interceptions, um, like in, in coverage, he can get caught every cornerback gets caught at, at some point, right? Jalen Ramsey, Pat Sertan, uh, Sauce. You let you end up, because of the way nature of um, the offenses, because of the nature of the, the league and the way it's set up, they're, they're going to get caught at some point. I, I think it is a and big Wide receivers lot. have every single advantage going. It's so frustrating yeah. when, when people are calling out cornerbacks. They're like, you talk about playing with one hand tied behind your back. Exactly, which is why the touchback rule is so important. Glad you're on board there, Connor. Um, I I just think for the 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 car like for the Cowboys, you know, the the digs piece could really come into play in in other games. It's not going to come into to play here. The worry, if you're the Cowboys, is that you know you bite the complacency. Right, that's ultimately what cost them against the Broncos a few years ago. Um, they can't afford to to be complacent. Um, but and I'm just I'm just sad for for Diggs and sad for us. Right, injuries are, are so annoying because what you want to see the best players. Like how annoying is it? You know, whatever you think of Rodgers, that you don't get to see that play out with the Jets. That you don't get to see this play out now for the the Cowboys defense, which was so much fun. Like if you're a fan of football, you couldn't help. Even if you're a Giants fan, even if you're an Eagles fan, you couldn't help but think, my God, this Cowboys defense is serious business. 
yeah boys will be boys for me and i think they will be winning on sunday i have the cowboys down on that one myself i think we're full house on that one and um, steelers at raiders is a, is an intriguing tie brian um both teams blown out in 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 one game and, and finding a way to win in the other game steelers in the most uh in in unusual fashion as we were saying um on sunday with negative yards negative four yards in the final quarter of that game against the browns and yet finding a way to uh to win defensively that's not a sustainable tactic for the season and they're going to need to show an awful lot more than they've shown offensively whether to get over the raiders or anyone else yeah i agree um they've obviously got tougher games to come this for me is still a very difficult game it's the first game in vegas the home opener for, for the raiders who despite the last last week would have we touched on into certain games, you just know, unfortunately, you're never going to be able to measure up and match up against your opponent. That was one last weekend. I think for the Raiders, we have to see more offensively out of them. And we need to see more of Jimmy G. Like Colin, you know, tongue in cheek last week said it wasn't difficult for him to beat the Broncos because the Broncos were so poor offensively. They didn't do a lot offensively throughout the course of that game. There was just touchdowns early on and late on to, to Myers. We've got to see more from Jimmy Garoppolo in this team. We've got to see more from Josh Jacobs, because this Steelers defense is going to put you under pressure. They need to get them on the back foot, and they need to put themselves in a position where they're winning the game in order to see if Kenny Pickett can can beat them. Because Colin rightly called out on Tuesday, with the exception of one or two plays and the Pickett's touchdown, we didn't we see we didn't see very much. You alluded to the the negative yards in the fourth quarter. I mean, it's been a disappointing start because there was a lot of high hopes for Pickett going into the season. A lot of people su- suggesting they can go to Super Bowl, not Super Bowl, sorry, late deep run in the playoffs, get win the division. We haven't seen it yet. They got over the line last weekend because the defense got them there. But I'm going to go Raiders. I'm going to go Raiders in this one. I think I think Josh McDaniels, it kind of suits him that there's no expectations on this team because when he went in there last year, me included, thought the Raiders would come back, go to the playoffs again. I think they're not going to go to the playoffs, but I think they can find ways to navigate victories. And I think in Sunday Night Football, with Devontae Adams there and other players, I think we'll see more from this offense at home and Raiders to win. Because right now I'm trust them a little bit more than I do the Steelers. Brian trusts the Raiders to win. Call them a little bit more than the Steelers. Uh, a lot of what we've seen from the Raiders though this season has been um, Garoppolo to Devonte Adams offensively. We haven't seen them run the ball well at all, and we haven't seen much evidence of a pass rush. Max Crosby being the the honourable exception there. Um, they they're one and one. It, it's only two games, and it's not not time to panic. Do they have enough to get it done on Sunday at home? Uh, I think uh, this one is uh, close to home in terms of references. I think uh, both of these teams still haven't found what they're looking for uh, because I don't think that Kenny Pickett is going to be the long-term answer. Um, the the Steelers' offense looks absolutely horrid um, and uh, his decision-making. Time to turn it around, um, but I, I think for the, the Raiders, I don't think Josh McDaniels or Jimmy Garoppolo are the long-term answers there either. Uh, Adams uh, obviously had the, um, you know, we'll see if he ends up um, playing. Um, My understanding is there's a a possibility that we may not see him uh, take to take to the field. If if that's the case, good good night Vienna. Um, uh, You know, but this, like, this is one of those weeks, right, where you look at the NFL and there are lots of tasty games, but you look at this and you look at Titans and Browns and you just think, oof, um, you know, may they, I, I wish we had the the option uh, that they have in the States with the YouTube TV where you can set up a number of different games, but like you don't necessarily have to go down the, the red zone route. Um, I, I'm going to go uh, with the, the Steelers because Mike Tomlin is infinitely better as a head coach than Josh McDaniels. Um, but, but, but with everything, like, what was Mike Tomlin thinking bringing Matt Canada back? Like there, there probably needs to be a federal investigation into that. <laughs> Connor, sorry, yeah. just a quick one. Sorry, quick one. He says good night in Vienna. Well, you'll always have a good night in Vegas. And I think if the Raiders are to navigate a victory on Sunday night, we might see it be party town along the strip and no better place to have a, a good night than the strip in Vegas. Yeah, well, look, there's a party on the strip every night. I think there'll be one on Sunday, but I think it'll be the Steelers fans celebrating. They'll travel in numbers, and, you know, that's probably the most attractive road trip going, let's face it, for for NFL fans, uh, and they will enjoy that in more ways than one, I think. Defense travels well. 
Tomlin travels well. All is not well in that Raiders camp. The whole Chandler Jones situation continues to rumble, and you wonder what way that's going to be resolved. I see too many things not working in Vegas. I, I agree with everything that you guys have said about Pickett in that in that Steelers offense. I don't think it'll continue to be that bad. I hope it won't. Uh, as I said, I not picking with a massive amount of conviction. I just find it hard to back the, the the Raiders the way they're going this season. I think Steelers have a little bit more about them. I think they know how to navigate these 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 games, and I think they'll they'll get the win. Monday night's a double header and um, starts with Eagles at Bucks. Brian, um, we, we alluded to this very briefly earlier that the Eagles at 2 0 arguably are the worst 2 0 team in football right now, that, that, you know, which is a huge thing to say, I get, given the talent that they've got on that roster, but they really have not looked like themselves over the first two weeks of the season. Yes, they've got the wins, um, but got the bounce of the ball in both of those games, and we haven't seen a click yet. Um, is the Bucks the game for them as they visit Tampa to get, uh, to get things together? I don't necessarily know whether to get it together. I, I certainly think they'll win. I don't think like I think the Bucks are flat with a two and zero record at the moment. You touched on the Bears' performance last weekend. We spoke about the inability of the Vikings to put that game away and move the ball at times, and you know how lackluster they were. But uh, the Eagles, I think it's a lot of it's down to the the, the coordinators. I mean, we're we're still talking about the fact that they're transitioning into two quarter two coordinators. Defensively, last weekend they were got up by the Vikings. You could argue the Vikings' offense. Can be strong in this day, but for me, Hortz has not played at the level we saw last year. Even his rushing yards and attempts of rushing yards is, is increased. You know, people would argue DeAndre Swift had a really strong game last weekend, and maybe the pressure can be taken off him and they can relieve the duty of him rushing. But he's so dynamic to that team when he's rushing, and teams have to kind of factor in that he's potentially like a second running back, a third running back. We haven't seen it, you know, his yards has been quite slow. The offensively, they've been sloppy. They'll win this one because I think. The, as we said in some of the other games, the gap will appear throughout the course of the game. The Eagles you know, to go into Tampa and win, but I'm still waiting for that come to Jesus game this season that we saw very early on last season. But I don't think it will be on Monday. I think the Bucks will find a way to keep it reasonably close for a period of time. Then the Eagles put away later on. Colin, we hold the Eagles to high standards because of what we know that they have and what they're capable of. And they've been a good way short of that this season. The Bucs, on the other hand, to be fair to them, have outperformed so far. Baker has outperformed so far. But he's outperformed against a sputtering Vikings team and against a Bears team that looks like it's heading for the number one overall pick. Um, what way does this one go for you? Uh, to, to me, like in, in many respects, I am, I'm not surprised that the Eagles have kind of stuttered, uh, because of the fact that Shane Steichen moved on. And I kept call, calling that out. And to me, it's even more than, you know, potentially, um, Brian, Brian Dable going Ken Dorsey coming in because uh he he just had like he'd such a great relationship with with Hertz he he had been in, involved in really um building up uh Hertz and he he's a great feel for how to call the right plays at the the right time um so it it is an enormous change and just because there always seems to be you know um the the feeling that like oh somebody's been in the building and they've been the QB coach and therefore it's automatically going to be the same and we're seeing that that isn't the case for the Bucks Baker has been really good in the in the first two weeks but he's been really good at all the things that we know Baker can be good at we've yet to see Baker like you know regress to the mean and and that's what I uh, you know think um, and ultimately. Uh, for the Eagles, uh, you know, Meatloaf said, when you really, really, really need it the most, that's when rock and roll dreams come true. And that's going to be it with the Philadelphia Eagles in 2023. Yeah, I agree. I think the Eagles will be fine this season. I think they'll be fine on Sunday night as well. Um, I don't think they're going to need to be at their best. They haven't been so far. I don't think they're going to need to be at their best to get it done against the Bucs. Um, uh, and yeah, we await with bated breath whether Baker will will continue to go or whether he'll he'll regress to the mean on Sunday. This could be the the, the beginning of the phase two of the Baker experience, which is the bit where you realize, oh yeah, he's still Baker after all. Um, final game is Rams Bengals on Monday night. Bengals at 0 2. A big question mark over Joe Burrow's fitness and about how bad that calf injury, which kept him out of preseason um, and has kept him out of sorts over the first two weeks and saw him limping off the game. Uh, at the weekend, big questions over whether he's 
going to be able to be, be anywhere near his best. Um, Brian, can the Bengals get their first win on Sunday night against a Rams team that has been, uh, again, performing ahead of expectations, has a lot of young players slotting in and doing good things on both sides of the ball? It's amazing when you look at the schedule and you look at the Monday night game, you say, oh, that, that's a nice game. It's not when you, you know, they're overly keen to stay up for. But this game has become very important very quickly. If the Bengals are to lose this game and go 0-3 and, and the Ravens pull off the victory against the Colts, which we're suggesting they will, there'll be three games behind the Ravens and they've lost to the Ravens. Essentially, they're four games back. You, you, can, you can nearly write off the division. Now, bear in mind we're talking about this team going to the Super Bowl and being the AFC and potentially being the, the AFC number one seed. If they come out of this game and 0-3, oh the storyline may, may be more about how, how well the Rams are playing this season. But I think Burrow will find a way. It, this one is like, they have to get this game. You know, and if they get this game, it'll be very much, we Burrow's been struggling. We were 0-2 last year. We came hot at the right time. If you go 0-3, pressure only mounts on this team. For me, they win. Um, do I get it? Do I, I think they have enough to get it get it done? Um, I think the Rams have been a great story so far. Um, it's been, you know, a, lot, a bit of a surprise. And maybe this surprise will continue, especially if they were to go win. But Bengals are home Monday night football. Joe Burrow knows they have to win this game. So for me, uh, McVeigh will be out coached by Taylor, and, and the Bengals get over the line. But it won't be won't be easy. It certainly won't be as easy as we thought when we looked at the schedule a couple of weeks back. Yeah, Bengals, of course, they're, they're my Super Bowl pick. I have uh, Burrow as, as, as MVP for the season as well. But all of that, of course, is contingent on him being fit. Um, there is no plan B in Cincinnati. Yeah, backup quarterback is not going to get it done. Uh, a lot of people would struggle to name him. That's a, that's a table quiz question. I can tell you who is the who is the backup to Joe Burrow. And let's hope it doesn't come to that with all due respect to the man this season because you're just writing it off. Um, not only were they 0-2 last season, they also at the midway point of the season were only 4-4. Four and four. Uh, sorry, they were five and four. Then they reeled off um, eight wins in a row. Um, in, sorry, they, it would, I think it was ten overall if you include the if you include the playoff game. So we know this team can can throw punches in bunches. We know um, they can put together a streak. Um, and everybody's been expecting it to click eventually. Um, but you don't want to fall to to zero and three, especially as you say, Brian, having lost a key divisional game the first week out, um, and with the Ravens. Looking like they're rolling, and all three of us picking us, picking picking us to win and to go three and zero. Oh, that that that's a big hole to climb out of. We talked about the importance of the number one seed. Never mind winning the division. You know, you don't want to have a tricky road uh, playoff game, and um, if that's what the Bengals' destiny is, as everybody more or less everybody expects it to be, um, you've got to find a way to dig this one out. Um, I think it's a very close call it's a lot closer than you'd like it to be if you're a Bengals fan I'm ultimately edging Cincinnati but um Rams have been a lot better than I expected to be Colin um how do you see it going uh this is karma chameleon because none of this makes any sense whatsoever and uh, the culture club never did uh and Motti's famous the crazy gang have beaten the the culture club well maybe i'm uh going that way in, in this because i'm going to say that the rams are going to do it i don't think burrow's calf is right in any way shape or form and i had uh the the bengals going to the super bowl as well but he, he it's not right and i the the concern for me is that they're going to put him out there because they're going to look at this be, and they're going to say like we're capable of beating the rams we'll get it back to two and one we'll see where joe is, is then but he, he doesn't look in any way shape or form comfortable and um I, that is a, that's just in an enormous concern and i think the rams have a very talented dc they have a very talented head coach and it, look if the if burrow was at you know um you know if he if the injury wasn't there I, this would be bengal's all day but i just don't think he's right and he went into uh, training today and he was wearing a, a full sleeve and he's not even walking right I mean, to, to me, that the fact that he could end up taking the field um, on, on Monday night, I no, I don't like it. I'm I'm going Rams on this. All right, and that is a wrap for our week three preview. You can check out all four segments, of course, wherever you get your podcast. Thanks for everybody who tuned in this evening to watch us on YouTube Live, where we are every th Thursday night previewing the games. And we look forward to picking up all the talking points next week as the weekend progresses.